a toaster, a washing machine, a condominium on wheels, just call it whatever you want. But it is the best-selling MPV in Japan for a reason. And this one over here is actually mine. Know why I got the Serena? Well, the shape, the handling, the prestigiousness are not the reasons why. I know what you're thinking, the Alphard or the Valfire would be a better choice, but they are from a different segment altogether. Nissan has the L Grand for that. This one goes directly against Toyota Voxy, Mazda Biante, and Honda Sep Sister. Step wagon. Lucky for Nissan, all its direct competitors are not offered here in Malaysia. Officially, at least. They share the same similarities: size, shape. And that narrow body is very suitable for tight, crowded cities in Japan, which is why they are so appealing over there, and of course with their functionalities as well. So this is what it is, a functional people mover for common people like myself. So now that we have set the tone right, let's take a closer look at this better dress Serena over here. This is the Serena S-Hybrid J-Impal, which has 10% more downforce than mine over there. This V-Motion strut grille gives it a strong commanding presence. The dual layer headlamps are LED projectors. This part right here, beautiful isn't it? The signature lamp. But they are not the DRLs because some genius in Nissan thought, ha, ah, it would be a good idea to have the DRL all the way down there using... Ha! Ah, bing! Halogen bulbs. I should start a petition demanding for complimentary replacement to LED bulbs for all Serena users. Who's with me? Who's with me? Because really, it just cheapens the car. The J Impal Edition comes with chrome bits. As you can tell by now, it's at the lower front lip and surrounding the DRLs. On top of that, you also get this really beautiful looking 18-inch rims wrapped in, wait for it, Michelin Pilot Sport 4 tyres, which is surprising for a car like this. It is wider at 220, 40 in size, so it looks more flush along the side of the car as compared to the 16-inch ones in my car. That every time you look from the back of the car, it looks like it's just going to topple over. From the side is where it gets this toaster or bread box nickname because it's just too squarish and boxy. You just can't help it, right? But luckily, it has this two-tone paint design to help it visually. And I like this shark fin D-pillar design. Around the back, which looks like a very high-tech, made-in-Japan front-loading washing machine, which I honestly like. The way they black out the screen with the chrome strip that divides it from the body colour, the S-shaped tail lights, the spoiler sort of like wraps everything around, and of course, you do get some chrome bits from the J Impal edition. Welcome to my little condominium. It is huge in here. Now, the next thing you notice is that the outward visibility from this car is excellent. It has this huge windscreen. It has a big cutout here on the A-pillar. The window line is actually very low all around the car. So for a car this big, it's actually very helpful. The steering wheel looks pretty sporty with the flat bottom design. It's not that meaty. It's fine since it's a shared family car. It doesn't come with pedal shifters. Well, it's fine as well since it's an MPV. It does have some buttons on it. When I say some, it's actually a few, which I'll get into that later on. The middle cluster looks like it's a mile away from you in a good way. It's very clear, you get the speedometer right in the centre. And on the side, there's another screen which you can toggle from ref counter to driving stats to settings and to more driving stats. DVR comes standard in all premium variants, which is an excellent add-on. I think every car should have one because of the number of wackos on the road nowadays. The head unit looks great within this floating black console. It's from Clarion, it's easy to use. It is Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatible. Now down here, climate control settings which you can control the rear aircon as well. I love the entire dashboard design, it looks great. It looks well built as well and has plenty of storage which I'll show you later on. But I can't say the same for the seats. Sorry to say they don't look very inviting. They don't look very comfortable as well. I have mine in black, just to be safe. Here, they do look like they have tried to make it better with this mocha leather and diamond quilted stitching, but they are only comfy-ish. They are not very supportive. 
I shall start a petition demanding to change your valve. Yeah, never mind. But at least they don't look very bulky. So in a way, you get more space in the cabin. So that's a win. Oh, now, would you like to check out my other section of the condo? Welcome to my living room. Please, step right in. Now you understand why this car needs to be tall. It is to get this much of headroom in here. It makes getting in and out of this car really easily. Just step in and step right off it. It's very convenient for elderly folks and even kids. Speaking of kids, it's so easy now to put our kids into the child seats as compared to my RX. This middle row comes with two captain seats. Now, usually my wife would sit here and our baby will sit here in the child seat. She can do this. She can slide this chair sideways towards the baby as and when she wants and still move forward and backward to make it easy for your passengers to access the third row seats quite easily from the side. Clever, eh? Now, since this is a family car, it is pretty well thought of. You get this aircraft-like folding table for when you want to have some snacks or work, which is very convenient. You get a USB port here to charge your phone, a phone pocket to put your phone while you're charging it. Tetare hook for your tapaos and stuff. You get climate control settings up here with air vents at the sides. You get an entertainment system for your kids and your in-laws as and when they want. As you can see, it has a sunscreen as well to block off the sun. The window is really huge. Now, all premium variants come with V-Cool security tint, but yet it is still very clear, very see-through. So when you sit in the car, you actually look like a fish sitting in an aquarium on wheels. So I would suggest to have a darker tint for this car. It will look better. The third row seat is surprisingly comfortable. I kid you not, this is my first time sitting back here. It is a proper MPV. This seat is actually pushed all the way back here. I still get enough leg room. Now, if I need more, I can move it in front and have more space. Also, another thing, you get to recline the seat. How cool is that? <sighs> On top of that, you get USB port right here and over there as well, and a button to close and open the door from the third row seat. You get two cup holders here and two more over there. Aircon vents. It's great. The most genius feature of this car has to be the two back door design. You don't have to scrape a wall, another car or yourself due to tight spaces. You just need to access this door right here to access your belongings. Clever, huh, this less. Now let's check out the inside. At full occupant capacity with a third row seat up, you do get a bit of space for your travel luggages. Down here, you get some extra secret compartment, which also means you don't get a spare wheel, but this car comes with a tyre repair kit, so that should be fine. This special compartment, you can either remove the lid to have a really deep compartment, or you can put it back in and hang it this way. There is another compartment to store your extra headrest for your extra passenger. But of course, this is an MPV. If you need more space, there's a lot of seats configurations that you can play with to store all your stuff. Here are the things that I like and don't like about this car. I love the fact that it has more than plenty storage compartments on the dashboard alone. You get it here, 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 and here. You guys wanna guess how many cup holders are there in this car? You guys ready? Yep, 14, one, four, two for each occupant in this car. You get two right here, two more on the door panels. You get four more on these folding tables, two more on the sliding doors, and four more at the back. On top of all that, you get seven USB ports. With this two back door design, we have actually found the perfect trekking car for our shoots. I like the fact that they have this hands-free function for their sliding doors to open and close it. You know how it's like when you have kids and grocery bags? So the things that I don't like about this car. The car comes with reverse camera and surround view monitor, which is great. But they are being displayed on a screen like a mile away from you. On that tiny screen, it is almost completely useless. Why can't they just show it on the head unit itself? Next up, the steering wheel. Take a closer look at it. There are some buttons on it. 
and also there are some missing buttons on it. For example, these are supposed to be the volume control button, these are supposed to be your audio control button, next and previous. This is supposed to be your button to pick up and hang up your call. They are all missing from the steering wheel. That's quite annoying. It doesn't come with automatic central locking, which means I need to manually lock it every time I get into the car. As a family man, I think this function has to be compulsory for the safety of my family. What a shame. And it doesn't even come with rain sensor for the automatic wiper function. Okay, so don't be mistaken by this Impal Edition. It doesn't come with some beefed up engine. It uses the same one in the Highway Star variants, just like the one in mine, which is a two litre, four cylinder, naturally aspirated engine with an S hybrid system. It's paired to Nissan's Xtronic CVT gearbox, which only powers the front wheel. It makes 150 horsepower and 200 Newton meters of torque. Zero to 100. Okay, no need to bother. Okay, top speed, all that. So is it a hybrid? It depends how you look at it. It's more like a micro-hybrid because unlike the full-on hybrid cars that can switch between electric motor and the petrol engine, whereas here, the electric motor is actually quite small and it doesn't power the wheels. So it is used as an alternator. Instead of using the conventional alternator that relies on the engine, which uses a bit more fuel, here, it harvests that wasted energy from braking and coasting, which then is stored in a sub-battery, which then is used to power up the head units, the screens, the aircon even, and also to charge your phone. The electric motor is also used to crank up the engine. There is a belt pulley that connects the electric motor and the engine, and with some clever computing monitoring the piston positioning, it is able to provide a quieter engine startup during the engine start-stop cycle. And on top of all that, it actually provides extra torque to the engine up to 15 Newton meters for about a second from the time you drive off from standstill, which is good enough to overcome the initial of a car this big and quite useful for city driving especially to save you some fuel. Speaking of fuel saving, Nissan claims that this car can do 14.2 kilometers per litre with a lot of highway driving maybe but I average around 11 kilometers per litre. That's mainly city driving actually which is not bad. On the safety front, it comes with six airbags and the usual safety systems like uh, VVD, brake assist, VDC, Hill start assist, even traction control and all that, but it doesn't come with those fancy stuff. Semi-autonomous driving, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, automatic braking and all that. But to be fair, this car was launched in 2018, so I guess it's okay. So now, how does it drive? You would actually be a moron to ask if this car handles well. With its shape and size and height, we just can't defy physics. It does have body roll, of course, but not to the point where it's going to topple over like how it looks. The steering feels light when you are driving around city and it actually tightens up as you drive faster to give you that confidence. Power delivery, to be honest, is actually lacking, especially when you have passengers on board but it is sufficient. You do get the push when you accelerate out from a busy junction. And if you push it a bit more, it goes. But you do get that familiar hollow throttle feel from Japanese cars, and it can get quite noisy from the CVT, but it is bearable. But then again, how fast you wanna go in such a thing? Just go slow and chill. Have a slow and safe drive with your family. Go up Genting slowly and chilly because it is actually very comfortable in here even with the larger 18 inch wheels and the michelin pilot sport 4 tires with 40 profile i'm genuinely surprised and also it's grippier because it's wider as compared to my tires and it makes it nicer to drive and nissan claims that this j impal edition has 10 percent more downforce than the standard variants yeah yeah it's about there Now, is there a big butt? Well, of course, every car comes with a big butt. In here, it is the lack of features. I'm not talking about fancy safety features or polar bear fur as roof lining. No, not all that. But it is those little things that we actually need that are not specced in. 
the missing buttons on the steering wheel. It looks as if it has been taken out intentionally just to save a few bucks. The wipers don't come on when it starts to rain. The car doesn't lock itself. I have to manually do it. Who remembers to do that nowadays? And that's a safety concern. And for a car this big, it doesn't even come with front parking sensors. These things just annoy me as an owner. Because it is a very well thought of and practical car that comes with a lot of things. And it's just unfortunate that these little things that we actually need are missed out. So now I have to go to a third party accessory shop like Kedai Abang to get it tweaked and upgraded. If you guys have any place to recommend, do let me know in the comment section down below. Maybe I can do a video out of it. If you guys want to see that, let me know as well. But then again, should this be the deciding factor? The good thing is, if you can live with it, the car still works fine. But if you're like me, just get it out there, get it fixed and installed. Problem solved. Now that you know and understand why this car is designed to look this way, which is for a purpose, are you starting to accept and appreciate the looks? Well, honestly, I like it. Because it is an urban people carrier, I live in a condominium, it fits nicely in my parking lot, and that small back door design, it is just perfect. But what's more important is, the China man in me uh, says, this is a lot of car for less than 150,000 ringgit. What else do you want? I needed a car big enough to ferry my family from point A to point B once in a while. And sliding door was my top criteria for that easy access. And this happens to be the most affordable MPV with sliding doors in the market right now. So this is it. And it comes with a 5-year unlimited mileage warranty. Apa lagi China mau? Oh sorry, aku tak resist. Apa lagi Malaysia mau? Just take it and go. Angkat. Take it and go. So, is this car for you? Well, if you're looking for a people carrier for its well thought of practicality and also at the same time value for money, then yes, because it is a lot of car for its price. But if you are looking to travel in style, prestige and plushness, then probably not. If you want to find out more about this Nissan Serena S-Hybrid J Impal Edition or the Highway Star Premium Edition, then log on to autobus.my. If you like our video, do give us a thumbs up, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the logo or the subscribe button below. And please click on the notification bell to receive the latest updates whenever we upload a new video. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye. Oh, they all share the same similarities. Same shit, the shit, shit. The dual layer headlamps are LG LG projectors. They all share some same. They all do shit. Bang, wah bang. Kan lah minyak sikit bang. <laughs>